Hey guys, I want to show you a new plugin called Bounding Mesh for 3ds Max. This tool simply allows you to create the bounding box for a selected objects. Uh, so you can see here, we've added them into this list here. You can remove them if you don't want them in, the, in there anymore. Um, and the nice thing about it is uh, you can add as many objects as you want. So by default, we have in the coordinate system here, we have it on auto. So what that means is it's going to find the average transform of the objects in this list and do the alignment to the bounding box based on that matrix. If you do local, it's going to use the matrix of the actual object itself. So if I start rotating this, you'll see it's always going to update to wrap the objects inside of it. If you need to, you can obviously move the pivot, which is essentially moving the object to be, you know, maybe more in the center of what you're trying to do. And then you can kind of align it as you prefer. Otherwise, you can use these other options. And the other one we have is world, which obviously is going to align it to the world uh, matrix with Z pointing up. And going from there, we have the shape options. We can do box by default. We have plane on the X, Y, and Z. And then lastly, we have the bounding sphere. Um, and then you can adjust the sphere segments as needed as well. Um, if we go back into the box, you'll see we have under general a padding option. So that will kind of add additional spacing around the objects that the bounding box is being calculated for. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it's useful for the plane one and the sphere one as well. And then lastly, we have offset options. So, you know, maybe that's a little bit more visible in the plane one. This is going to move the item in the, its X, Y, or Z axis. Oops, I'll zero those all out. We'll go back to auto. Um, so one of the really cool things about this that I found useful that kind of is the reason I made it, if I clear this and add a text plus object to it, and we'll do auto on the plane Z. And then I know this text is two units high, so I'm gonna do negative one on the offset to kind of put the plate behind it. And then what I'm going to do is increase the padding a little bit. And then I'm going to add a chamfer modifier. I will change my selection to all vertices and then go ahead and I'll increase uh, the radius amount and add some more segments so we get a nice rounded corners. And then what you can do is select the object, your text plus objects, and you can start typing more stuff. So let's do sprinkle donut. We'll hit enter and say um, I love donuts. And you'll see that that backplate kind of updates in real time. So the nice thing about that is you always got something behind your text. And since we have it on auto, as we move the text around, you're going to see it update to always align to that text object. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any feedback or suggestions, let me know. Thanks.